basically every fly has got to have a hook on it. So we're just going to start with a standard hook. And the thing about flies too, uh, that a lot of people kind of get worried about is getting the exact hook or exact material for every fly you're tying. It doesn't really matter that much. The fish don't really care. They're not paying attention to what hook you got on there. So if you got just kind of a standard hook with a little longer shank on it, um, that's what we're going to start with. And then basically I just start wrapping my thread on that. And I usually start up by the eye of the hook and then just kind of slowly work my way back. And what you're trying to do is kind of cover up the whole hook shank with thread. That way stuff doesn't slip on there quite as much. And that way you got a good base to tie all your materials to. And then uh, this, like I was saying, this fly is kind of a good one to learn first because it kind of incorporates a lot of different stuff um, that other flies use. And um, a lot of the streamer type flies, wet flies, all of that, um, they're going to start with the tail. And so you always want to start from the back of the hook and kind of work your way towards the eye of the hook because that's where you're going to end the fly. So we'll start with the tail. And then I'm not sure, can you see this on the camera? I'll just kind of hold it, the packets up. And a really good tail material is a marabou feather. And the reason is because it, it's got a lot of movement in the water. It's real fluffy, catches a lot of movement. It can look like a minnow, um, insect, anything. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of that tail or that marabou feather and then just wrap my thread over it a couple times. And once I feel like it's pretty well secured, then I'm just gonna take the excess and cut it right off. And then the next material we're going to use is uh, this is a strung saddle hackle you could use any kind of hackle they make chicken feathers in all sorts of varieties and they're all going to work just fine this just happened to be the packet that i grabbed out of my um, box and it's going to work just fine and this one we're going to kind of match up the colors on everything so we're going to do everything olive and that's a really good color for tons of different species and so it's it's good to have a fly that's just straight olive but you could also vary it if you want so you could you could do the tail olive you could do the the rest of the fly a different color um, for this one we're just going to keep it basic and do it all the same and basically i just take that that feather and i usually just kind of run my fingers on it, it gets all the little points of the feather sticking out and then i'm going to tie it in uh usually with uh with the woolly bugger, you're gonna to wanna to tie it in from the point of the feather um, first instead of the base, like the thicker part of the stem of the feather. And same thing with that, once I, once I get it tied on there, I just snip off the excess. And then the next material, if I can find it here, is uh, gonna be olive chenille, which is basically just like a yarn. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I'm, I'm gonna just do the basic kind of standard um, body of a woolly bugger here and use the chenille because that's kind of the original pattern. And what I'm gonna do is take the end of that chenille and just wrap it on just like I did the feather. And it seems kind of weird right now because you got this long feather hanging off the back, but we're gonna use that in just a second. So don't worry about that. That's gonna get used up. It looks, looks weird, but um, that'll get wrapped over everything in just a second. So after I, after I take that chenille and tie it onto the hook, I'm just going to spin my thread all the way up to the eye of the hook. And then as I want to cover up all the thread and the, and the body of that hook, I just take that chenille and I just start wrapping it over the body. I'll try to make it look as pretty as I can here. Um, like I said, you can do this kind of as fast as you want and the fish aren't going to be that picky about it but if you're trying to sell them in a fly shop or something you want them to look real nice so i'll try to stack that that chenille so it's basically just wrapping one wrap in front of the next and just covers up the whole shank of that hook and then when i get just shy of the eye of the hook i just take my thread and wrap it back over it again and I'll cinch that down pretty tight, and then you can just cut the tag end of that off and we're done with that. Now for the finishing touch, and this is gonna kinda give it a real buggy, swimmy motion in the water. And it's, like I said, it can represent a lot of things. Um, can look like a leech, a minnow, 
um, a bug, all that kind of stuff. We're going to start doing what's called palmering the hackle. And what palmering means is basically you're going to take this feather and wrap it around the shank of the hook, but you're going to space it out a little bit. So there's a little bit of a gap in between every wrap. And if you, if you are doing a dry fly, I'll just show you an example once, and you want the hackle real tight together, you're gonna to do the same thing except for you're not gonna have space in between. You're just gonna wrap it real close together like that. But for this one, we want it to look a little uh, more like a bug or a minnow, so we're gonna just space it out a little bit. So I'll just take that feather and basically just start wrapping. I'm leaving kind of equal distance in between every wrap and basically just kind of making a spiral down the hook shank as I'm going. And I'm gonna just work it all the way towards the front. And I get right to the spot where I stop that chenille. So I have just a little bit of space left in between the eye of the hook and where the materials and I just take my thread and tie it right back or wrap it right back over top. And then at that point, your fly is pretty much done. So like we said, it's a real basic, really nice, easy fly to learn. And the, the last step to do after you trim that feather off is just tie your, your fly off. And there's a couple different ways to do it. You can get tools that help you out, whip finish tools. Um, I usually just do it with my fingers and it's the quickest, easiest way I can do it. Um, and basically I'll just tie a couple knots right over top of that all that material that I cinched down right at the eye. Two or three usually does the trick. Cut your thread off. And that right there will catch trout, steelhead, bass, um, pike, probably just about every fish that swims in Michigan will eat that fly right there. So it's a good one. Definitely, definitely one you want to learn how to do. And like I said, you can do a lot of different things with it. So a lot of times we take like a little bit of flash or something like that. And after we tie in the tail, we'll just tie in a little bit of that over the top just to give it a little more pizzazz. And um, any kind of variation you want to do like that, it's all free game. So that's the that's the standard woolly bugger there so that's a good one to learn and a good one to have in your box pretty much wherever you go